We've got a shipment here for you for something for Frankenstein Lawn. Is that correct, sir? Yeah, listen, I, I just need that sent here right now. Sir, is it true that you were stupid enough to try to seed your lawn in the fall in Florida? Or is that just a rumor? I know, don't, don't ask me a lot of questions. All I need to know is, when will it get here? And when can I throw it down? What's up, y'all? And welcome to day one of Frankenstein Rehab. Or is this a rehabilitation? Or is this a redo? Or a, I don't know what you really call it, but it's what we're doing. So I gave you guys an update last week and said we're gonna start working on this. And just in case you didn't understand why I call this Frankenstein Lawn, it's because I've been using it for experiments over the last several months. When I get a new weed control in, I might spot spray here and there to see what it's gonna do, see how it's gonna work, mess with the mix rates, all kinds of stuff. As well as you probably saw in the last video, I had my friend Caleb spray it. Now Caleb owns a company called Ultra Green, and I'm gonna give you a lot more information on this. And I don't want you to think that he was just putting down all these chemicals to kill weeds, even though that was part of it. Also included in that batch mix were some products from a company called Holganics. I'll link below in the description to them, but they are super cool. And I'll be talking a lot more about them in another few videos. So the first question some of you guys are going to ask is, Alan, is this the right time to go ahead and try to rehab this Bermuda? And the answer is absolutely not. It's the exact worst time. We're going to be in temperatures at 95 degrees here in the next couple weeks. But then again, if I did things right in this area, we wouldn't call it Frankenstein then, would we? Either way, the first thing I got to do today is give this sea grape another cutback. She is just getting too big. Additionally, I'm going to go ahead and edge and mow out the weeds. I don't have anything else to mow, as you guys know. Plugs over there are going strong, but not good enough to mow yet. So I got to get my mow therapy in. So maybe I'll mow this area like 17 times just to, you know, get it out of my system. Eight minutes of pruning and we're already looking better and cleaner. So some of you might ask, why did I leave this stubby one right here? You see that? Reason I left that is I'm still shaping this. I want to turn this into a tree form, like a mushroom tree form. And these things are prolific at sending out new shoots and suckers and all kinds of things. So I'll see if that remaining stem or trunk there will send anything up that's worthwhile keeping later on to shape it in another direction. Now that we're all cleaned up, now it's time to just go ahead and put down a nice organic fertilizer. Remember, we're calling this area Frankenstein because there's been a lot of stuff done to it. Stuff. Stuff. Throw her down! And so what I want to do now is, since I've given it a nice clean cut and I got the sea grape out of the way and, and my irrigation system will work like it was intended to now, we're just going to put down a good organic fertilizer. And our old familiar friend, Ringer Lawn Restore, is going to get the call. All right, guys, so here's Ringer, which you have seen from my original church rehab project. We used it in one of our applications. Now, the biggest question that I'm going to get from you guys, I already know, is, is this better than Melorganite or is Melorganite better than this? And the answer is I'm going to do a full comparison coming up here, but there is no wrong answer. Both are great. In this case, I chose Ringer because it's going to get me a little bit faster results. Additionally, it requires less pounds on the ground than Melorganite. The thing to know about Ringer is it feeds the soil. It feeds microbes in the soil. It's part of the soil food web that we've talked about a few times but healthy soil is what's going to support a healthy lawn in the future and that's why I'm using this because I need to get my soil healthy here so I can support all this new Bermuda grass that's going to start spreading here really soon. Another interesting thing about Ringer is it doesn't smell bad at all so if you're somebody that doesn't like the negative smell that's associated with organics 
then ringer's what you want. Actually, now that it's been sitting out here in the Florida sun for a little while while I'm filming, it actually smells like baking doughy bread. Almost a little sweet though, like when bread just starts to kind of go stale a little bit, it can kind of get like a sweet smell to it. That's what I'm smelling. Actually kind of good, makes me hungry. No, I'm not going to eat it. So you can see here we've got a 25 pound bag and it says it covers 5,000 square feet. That means that the recommended application rate here is 5 pounds per 1,000 square feet. And for those of you that are smart, that's going to deliver a half a pound of nitrogen and one third pound of potassium. But because this is Frankenstein lawn, I'm not going to put down just the general half pound of nitrogen. I really need to boost this puppy, so I'm going to double up on the rate and I'm actually going to put down 10 pounds per thousand to give myself one full pound of nitrogen. And that's really what I'm looking for is that nitrogen boost because the sun has been opened up to this lawn now by trimming the tree. The irrigation is going to be working properly and I'm going to start cutting it regularly, meaning that this Bermuda is going to react and it's going to start to grow and it's going to start to spread and it's going to get nice and thick all on its own and Ringer is going to be the engine driving that growth. Now another thing here and we're going to talk more about this is that this is the spreader that I've been using for years right here. This is the Earthway. It's called an estate spreader. It's a 2100 and it's been an awesome model for me. I bought it in 2011 and uh, it's held up really well. I've never had a problem with it. The only reason I needed something different was because of this. This is just a hard rubber tire on a plastic rim. And it's been super good quality, but the only challenge I have there is it doesn't do well over bumps. So I'm upgrading to the 2600A+, which is essentially the same unit, except for it's got the air-filled tires now. And I'll be doing a comparison of this to the F80, which is the professional model. But this is really the spreader I wanted for two reasons other than just the air-filled tires. So the first thing is, is it's got the round hopper. So see how it has the round hopper? And I'll do, again, I'll do the comparison with the F80 later. But see that round hopper? That gives me a much better field of vision when it comes to where my product is going. And then the other thing is, that's an upgrade. This model, I think it's an upgrade over that one, unless that's just older, I'm not sure. But this has side spread control. So essentially what happens in a spreader is the product drops down through these drop holes and then it hits the impeller here and the impeller spins and throws the product out. And the holes are configured, they use science obviously, so that there's a drop rate, then there's a spin rate on the impeller and then there's the size of the paddles in the impeller and all these different things that will then create a nice even swath for you. So what side spread control does is you can actually close two of these drop holes. So there'd never be a time when you're in a fixed or parked position where you would have all three holes open. This is just for demonstration. So you can see these are the drop holes right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to engage the side spread control now. And now you can see that these two holes, these two drop holes are now covered and this one is still open. Notice that this is the latter hole, right? So think about it, when the product falls, it's going to be falling at the end, tail end of the impeller spin, which is going to effectively cut off any product from coming out of the left side and only give you this widespread over here. It's also going to cut the rate by two thirds and that's important on a trim pass because a trim pass is really just an edging pass, but it doesn't deliver the full amount of product on the edge and it's not meant to because it's not a full wide swath. So essentially what happens by cutting off that two thirds, it allows you to get right up to the edge and do just a good edge or trim pass and do it in such a way that you're getting the product down at the proper rate. Whereas with edge guards, which you guys will remember in one of my videos I made called how to dominate your neighbor, I made a DIY edge guard just for fun. All that did was block product. So hundred percent of the product was still coming out, just it was being blocked and deflected and shot straight down. And that actually gives you a little bit too thick of a line at the border. But of course, when we're dominating our neighbor, maybe that's what we want anyway. guys there you go hope you've enjoyed this video now here's some super LCN bonus footage I'd like to thank this company called Graham Works that saw that I like to smoke quite a few cigars here and there and they sent me this really cool travel humidor if you'd like to send me something and I find it useful I might include it in a video too I'll put my PO box information in the description below as always I'm Alan Hain the lawn care nut I appreciate you guys watching hope this has been helpful to you and I'll see you in the lawn